Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Chautauqua Sunrise is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. Serving home cooking, Jack's Barcelona Drive-In, 8249 First Street, Westfield. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner by beautiful Lake Erie in a summer cottage atmosphere with local wines and beers available. Peter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Peter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. From the Access Channel 5 studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Channel 5. Continuing the traditions of Senior Report, we are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week, countywide, from 9 to 10 a.m. Join us by calling in live, emailing us, or checking out our social media. And now, from the Channel 5 studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Hey everybody, we're back here at Chautauqua Sunrise, another Saturday morning in Chautauqua County. We're broadcasting out of the beautiful studios here in downtown Mayville, New York. Well, it's a little cloudy this morning. I, uh, I, I always remark every week whether I've, uh, how many different seasons of clothes I've worn, and so far I'm up to three again, uh, spring, winter, and fall. Uh, I haven't quite got to my summer clothes this week. <laughs> but we did have the windows and doors open last night while we were sleeping, so it's promising. It's just maybe a chance of some rain today. Of course, I have a bunch of topsoil I gotta move, and it's gonna rain, so I can't win. Anyways, we got another great uh, show in store for you today. Listen, I want you to grab a paper and a pencil because I want you to write down the phone number. I'm going to give you a couple seconds here. And the reason why I want to do this is because we're going to be talking a little bit, not yet, in a little bit about veteran services here in Chautauqua County. And uh, they're going to give you some phone numbers and some information. And this is just one of those things that just from my experience talking to people, listening to people, wherever I go, that there still is not enough information and people hooked to the system. So, you ready? You call this number today, 753-5225, 753-5225, because I want you to call in, I want you to bug these guys, I want you to ask them all kinds of questions, because I've got questions, but I know a lot of the answers already, okay? But I want you to ask your personal questions or find out how you can uh, set an appointment with them, but that's coming up. You can Twitter us, you can email us. If you're too shy to talk to them in person, Give them your question when you, when you call. They'll send it over here on my iPad, and then I'll ask the question. But I want you to be involved. Okay? So, stay tuned for that. We have lots of uh, information to share with you as we do every week. You guys are doing a great job sending in all your community events, and we'll get to that in a second. Going right along with the theme of guests, Next week, I'm promising you, it's going to be another fun show. We are going to have, he's going to, he's going to kick me when he hears this because he watches the show every week. We're going to have, to date, my oldest guest 
ever and it's going to be a lot of fun and uh, I had my youngest guest not too long ago with the Girl Scouts. I think she was only like, wow, wow six years old, I think it was. But we're going to have our, our oldest guest coming on next week. And so stay tuned. You just got to keep watching the show. I thank you for those of you that come up and see me all the time uh, out on the street. I know you're enjoying the show. And it's all because you're giving us good feedback and, and we kind of have a feeling of where you want us to go with the show. So anyways, thanks so much. Okay, let's get to, right to some information that's going on right now. Okay. This isn't, yeah, I, I, let, before, all right, there we popped it up. The Climber Tulip Festival, May 21st. That's today, okay? Uh, let me make sure I get this in the right order of things here. Okay, today, watch the show and then run over to Climber. <laughs> They're going to have a wooden shoe 5K. Can you imagine that? Walking five kilometers in wooden shoes. I understand they used the wooden shoes long ago because that's how they could walk in the marshes. So you kind of plop through the puddles and that. You're going to have the library sale there, uh, crafts, vendors, foul shooting, as in basketball, not birds, child identification, fingerprinting with the Masons, I'm assuming, antique tractors, displays, car shows. There's going to be music, chicken barbecue, a variety show at the, at the school, and a grand parade this afternoon at 2.30. So... Check it out at the Climber Tulip Festival today. All right. Now, uh, before we go to another slide, I, I, I do have some other information here. This uh, coming Saturday, not a week from today, no, scratch that, got that backwards. This coming Friday, uh, 10 o'clock in Ripley, if you are interested in seeing uh, the result of all the things I've talked about the last several months about the, the Veterans of Valor signs, there's going to be a soft presentation. I mean soft because they're going to they're going to display them very shortly, and then there's going to be a big dedication uh, at the Bicentennial in July. But if you want to see the signs and be part of a uh, Memorial Day ceremony, this coming Friday, 10 o'clock at uh, the Ripley Veterans Roll of Honor Memorial uh, Monument, right in the right in front of the school, 10 o'clock. I'll be there, part of the part of the project. But uh, I just want folks to know that that's going to come on. Uh, and if you're available, show up. All right, let's keep going. Spring is in the air, and students of the Infinity Visual Performing Arts Center have been working since October to prepare for this year's annual spring showcase. Okay, everything's happening today, I guess. Sponsored by the Schultz Auto Group, the Infinity Showcase will take place today at the Jamestown High School Auditorium. Students will be putting on two perform performances, a matinee and uh, a matinee, excuse me, at two o'clock today and an encore performance tonight at seven o'clock. Uh, you're going to see the area youth. Infinity will be offering the chance to win one of the three baskets that are available gift baskets. This year's prices are $150 in cash, $300 in gift certificates from area restaurants, or $300 in grab, value grab bag basket filled with items from around Chautauqua County. Tickets are $5 uh, or 4 for 10 and can be purchased at the Infinity Center or for board members. Okay, the showcase is well-rounded evening of student performers featuring various music ensembles, soloists, as well as dance and theater performances. You will be amazed by the amount of talent display, displayed on the stage and the amount of hard work the students have put into this event. Uh, okay, students under 18 are free. And if you ha uh, ha have need of any information, give them a call at 664-0991. 6640991. And that's today. Okay, let's move on right along. From the Rural Center in Sherman, New York. The Rural Center there. There's gonna be a jewelry making class uh, this coming Wednesday, May 25, from 6 30 uh, p.m. to 9 30 p.m. Learn to make five beautiful rings. Beginners welcome, thirty dollars per person, materials and I don't know what this means. Material and everything else is included. Uh, for information, 753-6977. Okay, also from the, <clears throat> the Rural Center is a gentleman swap meet. It took me a while last week to figure out what this was. This is coming up on June 11th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's in the old Sherman Ford Garage at 130 uh, West Main Street. All proceeds go to the Youth Summer Program for the Rural uh, Center. You register at Woods Power Sports or come 7 a.m. Uh, that day. It's $15 for a 12 by 12 uh, 
what do you call it, spot there. And uh, it's going to be the same day as Sherman Yard sales. Uh, cars, motorcycles, mowers, etc. Uh, Ten dollars upon sale. Food will be available for purchase. Okay, so the whole idea is, guys, this is your idea, chance to get all your junk out of your garage that your wife has been bugging you about. Don't tell my wife. And uh, you can set up for a gentleman swap meet, and that's where you get all those good parts and things that you need for those old cars or whatever you need for your tractor. Okay, coming up uh, soon. Next, mark your calendar, the uh, 60th Columban Sisters Spring Festival will be June 5, and that's from noon to 6 p.m., a beautiful location out there on the lake on Route 5. I've played there a couple times, great people, lots of fun. And on June 4th, uh, Sister Corona will be calling in to tell us more about what's going on, so we got that set up. Also, uh, my friends at Crossroads Markets, they want you to know that Memorial Day weekend, there will be a countywide yard sale you can set up for free. So the stuff you bought at the Sherman Swap Meet, you no wait a minute, let me see if that those dates work. No, you you go to the you go to Crossroads, buy all this stuff at Crossroads, and then you take it to Sherman Resell and mark it up five percent. Okay, it's a free setup. If you want uh, uh, any information, call three two six six two seven eight. All items for sale must be flea market or yard sale quality. No new merchandise. So this is perfect. Original artwork or craft items are allowed. Okay, then there's going to be a chicken barbecue presented by the Brockton American Legion Post 434. Proceeds fund the American Legion and its community activities. So everything's lots of veteran stuff going on here. Okay, and other information, I got three more announcements and then we'll, we'll uh, get to our guest here. Infinity's got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be hosting Bill Ward at the Infinity Arts Cafe 7 p.m. on Friday, May 27th. So that would be next Friday. John Cross will be joining Bill and they will perform a variety of songs from blues to Texas swing. I've seen these guys play together and it's not the combination that you necessarily would think that somebody that, that is a brass guy and then you got like a, <clears throat> a guitarist, but when they put their music together, it comes out great. Uh, thanks to the support from the Chautauqua Community Foundation, Jazz at Infinity uh, Events are free, fa uh, family friendly, and open to the public. Audience members of all ages are welcome. Okay, let's go to Westfield. Uh, they are looking for donations for their upcoming Grape Discovery Center fundraiser to be held on June 18th from noon to five. The rain date is the next day, June 19th. Donations might include gift certificates, gift baskets, larger donations uh, will be gratefully accepted, a grill, a bicycle, or anything that could help our fundraiser be a success. You don't want my grill. Uh, this afternoon, <laughs> Uh, the afternoon will include a classic car cruise in by the Lakeshore Street Rod Association, chicken barbecue by Kiss Barbecue of uh, Westfield, New York, raffles and fun. And just as a footnote, on a personal note, I'll be performing there from 4 to 5. Uh, I'll be coming back from a gig from Jamestown, so I talked to Christina, who was on the show not too long ago, and I said, yeah. As long as I have a quick setup, I'll be there. So from 4 to 5, yours truly will be performing. Going back to Jamestown, the Infinity Visual Performing Arts. Let's see what they got going here. Let me see here. Uh, okay, the Local Music Showcase is coming up on September 10th. Uh, we had Shane Hawkins on here just recently, and she was talking about this, uh, this particular fundraiser. Nearly 50 bands, including yours truly and my partner Will Russell, uh, will be donating their time each year to, the, to, to help Infinity. More than a dozen local venues will donate their space for the cause. Interested bands or musicians are asked to fill out a short informational form, which can be obtained by stopping into Infinity or sending email or sending an email to uh, lms at infinityperformingarts.org. All acts must submit their forms by July 1st. This is a great opportunity for musicians to uh, try out some music. If you're new in the business, if you're just moving into the area, get yourself uh, some notoriety. Uh, Will and I are going to be playing at the pub. I'm not sure what time, but we'll tell you all about that later. And finally, from the Rural Center in Sherman, she sends me a lot of good stuff. These you, these people figured out that I will talk and you get free advertising. Mm -hmm. Wednesday at 10 a.m. and Friday 1 p.m. I don't have a date on this, Chris. That, wait a minute. From the Rural Center in Sherman, Wednesday at 10 a.m. and Friday 1 p.m. for an Eat Smart Strong class. All are welcome to partici participate from home. 
homeschooling you looking for credit in house stay at home moms looking for easy fun healthy meals and elderly looking what and the elder <laughs> not elderly looking and the elderly who are looking to get out and i'm elderly looking uh, uh elderly ongoing classes okay and elderly looking to get out and try new cooking ideas we'll get to that they're also offering a light yoga it's like light yogurt i guess on fridays as well so this is ongoing so fridays and wednesdays you can go to get some classes at the rural center in sherman okay that's all i got here right now so we're going to take a uh, public service announcement and we're going to be back with a couple of great guys from the veteran service uh, uh agency slow down slow down and move over and move over when you see lights, vests, or reflectors, please give us some room. Slow down and move over. When you need us, we've got your back. Do you have ours? You got our back? You got ours? You got our back? Please, slow down and move over. And we're back! <laughs> okay. That's what I get for talking in between the, the commercials here. Okay, folks, uh, I told you to get your pens and paper out because you're going to want to call in today because this is really a really very important uh, show. I, I had these guys on a couple times already. I don't know. Maybe it's, I can't remember how many times you've been on a couple, three times. Three, three, four. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I have a, a, a near and dear um, desire to make sure that veterans in our county hear about what's available to them and their families. And so I promised myself and these guys, I'll try to get them on uh, every, every year, at least twice a year, so that they keep you updated because this is important, important, important stuff. And I want to welcome back uh, the director of the of Veterans Services Agency, uh, mm -hmm. Gary Chilcott, and his service officer, his service officer. Yeah. I got to do the rank thing here. Mike's Mike sir. Rao, the bear, <laughs> he's back. <laughs> and you got rid of Lori, where's Lori? Uh, Lori went to uh, a state opportunity. She works in Hamburg now. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was really hurt. <laughs> it hurt our organization for her to go, but uh, she she uh, she did a wonderful job in the two years that she right. was in Dunkirk. Right. Well, she on the show a few times. And uh, and as uh, the American Legion uh, Brockton commander said, it's going to be. Hard shoes to fill. Well, that, so, uh, that's a compliment to Lori yes. Dispenza. If you're watching, Lori, thanks for your service <laughs> and your continued help with the veterans. Um, just as a reminder, guys, uh, that we will be rebroadcast on WRFA 107.9 in Jamestown, the low power to the people. So this will be rebroadcast Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. So if you folks are listening later in the week and you do have questions, they're going to give you a phone number later that you can contact them if you have questions. Fair enough? Yes. Okay, guys, <clears throat> you ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw right. something at you now because I didn't talk about this. Oh. Ripley, New York, about a week ago, proclaimed itself as a Purple Heart Town. Did you know that? We are the Didn't first know, Purple yeah. Heart Town in Chautauqua County, Didn't and we are now part of the Purple Heart Highway that comes up out of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So how's that for cool? That's that's excellent. Excellent. And, and when I was that's talking excellent. about that Veterans of uh, uh, Valor uh, project mm -hmm. that's going to be uh, unveiled next Friday morning at 10, mm -hmm. um, the recipients, there's 17, only 16 agreed to have their names put on the, on the sign, but we had 17 Purple Heart recipients in Little Ripley. Wow. How cool is that? That's, well, that's, that's wonderful. So anyways. Yeah. Okay, guys, time to be quiet for me. And <laughs> I want you to tell us what's new in Veteran Services, and then we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff, and people can call in and ask you good questions. So have at it, Gary. We'll start okay. with you. Okay. Um, well, since we were here last in November, uh, right about that same time, our veterans, uh, we, we had been working hard for a year to acquire a new bus uh, to transport our veterans to the Buffalo VA Hospital. Uh, the old one had many miles and uh, it had a history of breaking down and that's not good for our veterans. Uh, so, uh, so over that period of time and through the county legislator, legis legislature and also uh, um, some help from Senator Young uh, and donations from the community. Uh, we had uh, saved enough money to purchase a new bus and that uh, that arrived in November and we dedicated it in December with Senator Young okay. and others and uh, put into operation through the winter and that served us very well. Gary, how many uh, <coughs> veterans will this hold? 
Uh, maximum, the capacity is 20, um, oh. but uh, it, it, we, the, the, one of the things we, we, uh, when we ordered this, we, we saw that we needed a more disability capability. Wheelchair accessible? Yes, okay, yes. Good, wheelchair. Good, good. But our previous bus only had one, and this one has three. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so now, but we also lose seating when we put more wheelchairs true, in. True. But, but it's a trade off, but it does give us a lot more flexibility. and. Uh, and uh, that's been a bit real, really big plus. Okay, now I know uh -huh. a lot of my viewers, they, yes. they, they have services in Erie, Pennsylvania. Correct. So does the bus go to Erie? The bus does not go to Erie. We used to run to Erie. Mm -hmm. um, and DAV is uh, Disabled uh, American Veterans. They, they, uh, they do provide services to Erie for that. So um, we thought about adding that, uh, but the majority of our vets, the, the, the difficulty is Buffalo, mm -hmm. not so much Erie. Erie's closer. For a southern county, uh, that's mm -hmm. anyway, and uh, we haven't had that much of a demand. We discontinued a few years ago because of low ridership. So, okay. so this was. Uh, uh, I thought about with the new van adding it on, but what we might very well do is add an additional run to Buffalo uh, as the as the. We're still well, let me, let me, let me do a follow-up question. So, mm -hmm. if there's somebody, <coughs> let's say Panama or, or Chautauqua or somewhere, yes. mm -hmm. and they go to Erie, mm -hmm. and you said the DAV. Do we right. have a, how do they get a hold of those guys? They have, we have phone numbers and, you know, they have, you know, they contact them and make arrangements. Uh, the other thing is that uh, veterans helping veterans, you know, um, uh, Erie is closer and uh, we, we occasionally will call other veterans, senior veterans, okay. would be happy to give another veteran a ride, particularly on a day maybe when, and that also, uh, that also is the case with Buffalo too. Um, we run Wednesday and Friday to Buffalo, um, thinking about adding another day to that. Mm -hmm. But say, uh, say a vet has a, a critical appointment, they need to go on a day that we're not running, we'll make sure he gets there. Hey, what is the schedule for Buffalo run? Buffalo is Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, Wednesday and Friday, I'm sorry. Yeah, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, and we're thinking about either add, probably adding Tuesday. Uh, we used to go, before our bus got in bad shape, we used to run Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, and we cut back on Mondays, uh, but uh, we may very well add as, as needed, okay. Well, let's throw a phone number okay. right now out, and we'll use it a couple times throughout the okay. show so people can contact mm -hmm. you. So who do they call? Okay, um, well, we, <laughs> yeah, we should Just call us and we can give them We can call, yeah, our number is 661-8255. And CARTS does our scheduling. Mm -hmm. So the CARTS number, which I don't have readily available. It's in the phone book, though, it, right? It yeah. is. It okay. is. Uh, but if you call us, we'll give you the CARTS number. Start, start we'll with you guys, 661-8255. Six, six, yes. five, five. That's okay. correct. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. CARTS will schedule our van, but not the DAV, not the DAV yeah. van. They yeah. schedule themselves. If they've got needs outside of our van or our bus, then they need to call us, and then we'll make arrangements. But you're like a one-stop. We Everything are. goes through we you, are. and you can mm -hmm. refer them to wherever right. they need to go. Right. That's right. awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, keep going. So transportation, yeah, transportation's uh, you know it's a critical thing in our county because we are obviously our rural, and our vets, uh, you know, they they use both the Erie and the. Uh, oh, breaking news! I got the phone okay. number for carts. My team is at six <laughs> six five. Six four six six. That's Sounds familiar? It. Perfect. All right. Sounds they, very my familiar. team nailed it again. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. You asked they, it appears uh, yes, magically. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, the uh, other thing since we were last here, I think that very significant is a program called Veterans Peer to Peer um, Support Program. Okay. We're one we're the fifteenth county in New York State to be awarded a grant through Senator Young and Assemblyman Goodell's efforts to uh, to receive a grant of $185,000. $185,000? Yes. That's, uh, a <laughs> that's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Um, and the grant, uh, the grant uh, is to establish a peer-to-peer -peer support non-clinical program for our troubled veterans. And by the way, it's also, it's, it's for our veterans that um, maybe they're getting support through the v VA, or maybe they're, or possibly they're not, or they don't want to go to the VA. This is this is an outreach. This is a way to bring them into the fold, and hopefully, uh, couple them with um, another veteran. Okay, a buddy program, as as uh, many of our veterans, you know, experience in the military. Absolutely. Or, you know, watching um, each other's backs. Exactly. Okay, so, so Gary, yes. Don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. 
give me a make up a story of who would be somebody that would fit this scenario. Um, what would be their need? What would be their need? It could be, um, you know, a, a, it could be a PTSD or TBI okay. uh, related injury. It could be, a, injury. could be a young vet or a Vietnam vet. I've seen, you know, the the uh, the, the total range, the, the total spectrum of veterans in age. Um, it could be uh, they aren't taking their medication and they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a homeless situation or near homeless. Um, uh, maybe a broken family, uh, and or they can't get any community support. So what would they've this, been turned away? So what would the buddy do? Well, the <clears throat> the buddy would take them and say, "I'm available. I'm here for you, 24/7. Mm -hmm. You call me. Here's my cell phone number. I'm there. I can transport you. I can. Uh, do you need food? I'll bring you food. Um, I will uh, take you to a medical appointment." I'm going to be there for you whenever you call. No me. matter what. Right. It's yeah. also uh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, yeah. you go ahead. Yeah. It's also an opportunity for for senior veterans who, you know, uh, successfully uh, dealt with uh, with PTSD and issues like this mm -hmm. to to give back. I mean, we, we always say that you know you, you never leave anybody behind. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just the, the way that we're wired, and so. If you have an opportunity to help somebody else, it's it's uh, you know it's a blessing to be able to, to give to give that back. But also, you know, there are a lot of things that you know a counselor uh, or a psychiatrist. There are a lot of there's lots of wonderful therapy uh, opportunities available that way. But with another veteran, maybe older, maybe the same age, there are little simple ways that that we learn to, to deal and cope with things that you might be able to pass along that a counselor might not think of. You kind of speak their language too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, you got those little terms. And I don't know what those terms are because I'm not a veteran. But things that you knew from boot camp or things that you knew out in the field, and it's just mm -hmm. a phrase or two, right? I'm right, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly. <coughs> we may not have all the exact same experiences, but similar mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you this is similarly talking um, to, to a vet recently. And um, he came in to do paperwork and he said, you know, I'm having frustration dealing with with, with, with my spouse so that you know we, we we argue more than I would like. And he said sometimes she bugs me when I'm working on the lawn, and I don't know how to explain to her that it, it just feels good. And I tell her, well, you know what? Anything could be a form of meditation. So let her know that you know when you're working on the lawn, it's a way for you to let your mind relax. So if your daughter needs the ice skates from the from the attic, it can wait for an hour. You know, or ask me the day before, whatever, when I'm, or whatever, whatever tasks or thing around the house that you're doing, because I know personally I love to shoot my bow when I practice. For me, that's a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. I relax, I shut right. my mind off. Concentration. Out. I don't have my phone out there and nothing. So if you could convey that to your spouse, and so those are the type of tips, that the, the type of things that may not come from a counselor, but from another vet saying, hey, this is what I learned. I found an activity that provides me some peace. Mm -hmm. And if you can convey that to your loved one, then they'll, they'll respect that, and, and then you can get the ice skates out of the out of the Right, right. <laughs> right. It's a dated life, person to person kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so is there training for these buddies, these, these uh, there uh, will, sponsors? There will be a training mentors? program that's set up. Um, you know, it, obviously it's non-clinical, but we will, you know, we'll, that, that's part of the whole, whole program, and part of how we're gonna spend the grant money is to train. Okay. Train the, the senior mentors. We call them senior mentors. Now, what, the senior mentors. This program, one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars. Is that for one year? Or is it re recurring funding? Right. How's well, the grant was established initially for eighteen months, and it was uh, granted in January, and it's for, and so it ends in June of next year. And we haven't spent any money yet, so we're, um, we, we, you know, we're we're behind. In my mind, we're behind. Okay, mm -hmm. um, working hard to to develop it and contract it, uh, contract this effort out. Um, but I'm hopeful that we'll get an extension from, from And they the usually do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people are watching right now. I mm -hmm. know they're watching. They're right. not calling, but they're watching. Right. All right, because they're shy. I don't know why. I'm <laughs> easy to talk to, right? I'm easy to talk to. Right. Absolutely. All right. So, <laughs> good answer. Anyways, uh, they could be veterans, and mm -hmm. I know there are veterans watching, mm -hmm. and they say, well, ah, maybe I could do that. Mm -hmm. How would it, same number? Call, mm -hmm. call yes. you and say, I'd right. be interested in that project. Mm -hmm. are, right. are, you, are you actively looking for seniors? Yeah, we're building oh, yes. a list. Yeah, we have a, we have a list of, of veterans that have actually, when it was announced publicly back in December, um, we, actually, we had veterans that came in and said, hey, we're interested, we'd like to be involved. Um, so we have that list. 
Uh, we're also looking for a coordinator um, and over a person overall to lead and manage the program. Okay. So, um, so that's that. Th those are those are kind of the the big items. And then w once we get the coordinator, then we move forward. And this would be something that would go on and on. And on. Well, and yeah, the counties that uh, the twelve counties that currently have programs, uh, they th and this started in twenty thirteen. Those programs have. Um, they, you know, the grant money ran out, or they got a little less grant money this, the second year and third year, mm -hmm. and now they're pretty much just self-sustaining. So it's their, it's really upfront money to get the program running, is, and then right. you find a way to keep right. it going through right. volunteers yeah. and so forth. And they've been Sounds very, like a great they've been very, very successful in the yeah. other counties. But they primarily, and I just add, they, the other counties that have been developed where, the, where they started were in more populated areas. You know, the Syracuse, Albany, Buffalo. Um, New York City, and those, um, and, and we're much different, obviously, <laughs> in our rural area. So uh, it's a challenge. It's a, more of a challenge for us in the populated areas. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a general question, mm -hmm. and, and I know you got a lot to talk about yet, but sure. I, I want to give you guys a little chance uh -huh. to take a breath. Uh -huh. Guys, uh, what we're watching right now again. You, uh, <coughs> I got Gary Chilcott, the director of Veterans Services Agency, and uh, Service Officer Mike Rao, and we're talking about. Important stuff here, so don't be shy. Seven five three five two two five. Give us a call. Okay, guys. True or false? Um, veteran services are being underutilized. Oh, true. true. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? I mean, with uh, in today's age, we've got all these programs. You hear about you know uh, veterans' needs and that they're they're not mm -hmm. getting their services, and yet it's underutilized. What's mm -hmm. where's the disconnect? A couple reasons, I would say. Uh, First of all, for, for younger vets, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, 43, so from my age and younger, th those of us who served, they didn't really tell us about our benefits when we got out. Like my VA benefit You, you didn't get a booklet that says it. <laughs> <laughs> we had this old oh my retired sergeant major, and God bless him, but basically when I got out at Fort Bragg, he told us that if you're broken dying, you could go to the VA. Well, that kind of sums it up, doesn't it? That's pretty, <laughs> and, and, you know, the VA, as much as we're the advocate and we fight with the VA, the VA does have a lot of wonderful programs, you know, w when the veterans can access. So that's part of it. A lot of vets who got out didn't know what they were eligible okay, for. Okay, so it was, in, it was a uh, education type thing. Mm -hmm. They weren't educated. Mm -hmm. Yep. And some of it is there's only a handful of us. Some counties only have one service officer. Mm -hmm. That's it. We're very fortunate. But we're kind of like peanut butter being spread over a big sandwich. <laughs> you know, there's a, not a lot of us to go around. Well, did you t let me see if I can remember. It's like 11,000 veterans? Yes. Like that. 11, uh -huh, I remember that number. Mm -hmm. So there's two to 11,000. Right. Yeah, I can right. see why. Right. Yeah. 11,000. <laughs> so that's why we love opportunities like right. this. Absolutely. Right. I'm happy to, right. to have you here. Okay. Yeah, I think the other, the other thing, and, and Michael will agree with this, that a lot of vets say, well, I don't need it, you know, or... Or save it for the other guy, or it's uh, you know. I hear that. I'm okay. I'm uh, I'm yeah. okay. I'm okay. You know, whatever. Yeah, but they're not okay. No. And, and well, and they earn the benefit. This is it. They've they've earned this. So use it. You know, use it. Use okay, it. Okay. Follow up question. <laughs> I'm glad you just said that because I was going to ask you this along the way. You said they earned it. So, mm -hmm. what qualifies a veteran to get services? It's um, we've talked about this before, but mm -hmm. I want to go through that because people say, well, I only went through boot camp or blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's some, some, some eligibility things. So mm -hmm. what are they, Mike? Yeah. Well, it depends on which benefit you're talking about. <laughs> okay. just, just, let's, just be, let's, just, let's be in general. general. We'll start general. with an honorable discharge. Okay. Yeah. If you have a dishonorable discharge, though, there's a chance you can have it upgraded depending upon the circumstances. Okay. So just to, if you have another than honorable discharge, that shouldn't stop you from calling us. Okay. Because a lot of times those folks made a silly, useful mistake, and it doesn't mean they're a bad guy. Okay. Um, but also start with an honorable with, with an honorable discharge, and um, just come in, come in and see. And it. you have to have a, a number that certain. A D, oh, it's called the DD two four two. DD two four two. I can only remember yeah. the first letter. D something. I know yeah. that. Yeah. And if you served uh, in, in the World War II era, it, it would just be an honorable discharge. They didn't call it that till after. Okay. We have a phone call. Ready? Yep. Okay. okay. Good morning, caller. Good morning, Dad. Ooh. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. This yeah. is Linda Spalding. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Linda. It's great to see you on the show. How about Thank these guys? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say thank you. <laughs> 
to both of you and all the veterans yeah. for the tremendous sacrifice that you make for all of us. Mm. And we should all be so grateful because people can't even fathom the, the things that you do for us. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Also, I want to say congratulations on the great news for the peer-to-peer -peer program. Thank you, Linda. The, this, is, this is a wonderful, much-needed program. Mm -hmm. Linda, you got veterans in your program, don't you? Yes, I do. I do have I bet veterans. They, I bet they don't know about this program. <laughs> no, they don't. But I will tell you, uh, mm -hmm. we just put two veterans on recently. Mm -hmm. uh, both are in the field of transportation in our program. Uh -huh. uh, one with Meals on Wheels and one with Carts. And if I have any questions regarding veterans' benefits and how it affects mm -hmm. income for the veteran or the spouse of a veteran, I have to tell you that Gary and Mike are tremendous giving us guidance, and thank you for that also. Did you, did you pay her to nah. call? <laughs> <laughs> No, but we do try to work to to, to work together. We We're, did, and, yeah. And yeah. she's uh, Linda's office in in our office helping folks and yeah. back and forth. Great, and, great. And Linda is also Linda helped us get a senior aide in the program who's been very very productive and helpful Super. to well, us. Well, you know, Chautauqua Sunrise has now become mm. the employment agency of the <laughs> office of the agent. <laughs> I just talked to uh, Pete Holt. <laughs> Pete Holt there in Mayville the other day, and he said that he just hired somebody for, to your agency, Linda, because he had heard it here on the show. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm here to, I, I, I should get a little kickback or something. <laughs> I don't know, you guys got, I placed yeah. a few people since, and that's what this show's about. Okay, yeah. keep going, Linda. What else you got? <laughs> well, I just want to say you have a wonderful Memorial Day coming up. Yes, yeah. yeah. thank and, you. And Linda. a great weekend. And Thank, uh, you. thank you again. Okay, okay. you welcome. Thank you, Linda. Thank okay. You. Well, it's not, people don't understand you guys actually, the, the various agencies talk together all the mm, time and you're absolutely. referring back and forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was probably a time where there wasn't that kind of thing. I know when Mark Thomas was county executive, he was knocking down the silos because mm -hmm. I was served on a committee with him. Mm -hmm. And I see more interagency kind of cooperation. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Last follow-up question to underused services. Mm -hmm. Families, are they getting all the services they should have as a, the spouse or family member to a veteran that's either mm -hmm. living or has passed on? That's probably what one, and Mike can talk to this too, I know you can, but <laughs> surviving spouses is probably one of the categories that they, um, you're right, vet, vet, when a veteran passes, the, um, many of the benefits end. Disability compensation, for example, mm -hmm. ends with death. Um, but the surviving spouse of a combat veteran uh, could be entitled to, to a surviving spouse, we call it death pension benefits, uh, depending on her income, depending on her health care, and whatever. The key and word you said was combat. Yes. To, yep. So well, if you were well, well, combat, combat period. Serving during a combat era. Yeah, okay. they, they have combat to, era. Yeah, they're, yeah, they don't have to have been in the theater, Fe the war theater. theater. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. in during yeah. the, the war time. Combat and era. whatever the government says, this is the... Yeah, right. right. Yeah, they define the VA. This is not a smart right. question. I'm right. not smart, being a smart mm -hmm. guy here. Right. Are there breaks of time where you can't get that pension because yes. it was yes. not a war? Yeah, post-Korea, like from okay. 55. Like the Korean War, for example, was 50 and 50, 51 to 50 and 51, but for VA purposes, they considered through 55. Okay, mm -hmm. but post 55, from 55 to 64, there's a there's a nine-year break mm -hmm. from 75 post Vietnam to 1990. Gulf oh, War. Gulf War. There's the biggest peace we call peacetime vet. So they would not be eligible for those services for a pension for right. pension yeah. benefits, right, 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 right. yeah, okay. or the widow would okay. not be. Right. No. So, 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 but surviving spouse, I, I can't emphasize enough. This probably this past week, I would, and I've got three more referrals sitting on my desk for Monday morning of surviving spouses that are either in you know their income is low and um, but their health care needs are high and they they can apply and how do people so, not know this why is this well, not just an automatic because thing? they think they think the benefit ends with the death of the veteran okay so so yeah, there wasn't they, that they, little handbook and that's why they got to watch this show right, yeah. okay i got a question that popped up actually there's two questions but they go together mm -hmm. this is do you assist with veterans funerals and helping families set up funerals and what are the qualifications for a funeral with a 21 gun salute mm -hmm. 
Go, Mike. That's um, <laughs> that's usually handled through the okay. through the funeral okay. home. Okay. Um, qualifications. Um, the military bases aren't doing that as much as they used to. There's just not the funding. Mm -hmm. So usually the salutes are organized through uh, like Joint Veterans Council, the Vietnam Veterans of America Club tries when as much as they can to get out mm -hmm. to that. Um, now, in terms of planning funerals, we, we don't we don't do that. Certain veterans, depending upon um, whether they're in receipt of non-service connected pension or service connected disability, or if they pass away in a VA hospital, can be eligible to receive funds towards their um, towards their burial. Okay. Now I understand if you have that form that DD two fourteen right. that that it gives you uh, the ability to get a, a, a headstone. Most yeah, most veterans. Um, our clerk Carrie uh, Finnerty, who's invaluable to our office, she does most of the burial benefits. Mm -hmm. And um, I wouldn't say every, but most veterans, uh, depending on when they served, are eligible for a flag and a marker. If you're a guardsman or, or, or reservist and you were never activated, you may not be eligible for the flag. Well, for instance, I know as World War II veterans. I was mm -hmm. told by the, right. the cemetery folks mm -hmm. at, at an occasion mm -hmm. that they were eligible for a basic. Tombstone. Yeah, right. it, you can choose a tombstone um, or a bronze uh, bronze marker. Okay. Or there's like for mausoleums and columbariums, the right. niche, mm -hmm. what they call the niche marker. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have, say, your family bought a headstone, like for example, my grandfather, depending upon the rules of the of the of the, the cemetery, you can have the uh, the bronze marker and a headstone. Mm -hmm. So you have the family headstone, and some um, some uh, cemeteries will put the uh, marker on the back of the headstone okay. or at the foot of the grave. Mm -hmm. But that's paid for by the government. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. again, that's things people don't know. Absolutely. It's also, what's also important is each cemetery in our county and I think all over have rules. Right. <laughs> and so depending right. on, you know, certain things you can and cannot do. So that's why the funeral, funeral director working through our office and then mm -hmm. working th with the family and the cemetery uh, to, to see what what works in that situation? It's like one size. You can't say one rule for right, everybody. Right, right. But the, but there are benefits out there. They there are be checked absolutely. out, and people right. uh, just need to call. Every a certificate from the president and an American flag is yep. you know everybody gets every veteran mm -hmm. will get that. So. And they've also the the VA has expanded the number of uh, religious symbols that can be put on the stones. Mm -hmm. There used to be, I think, like 12. We just came back from a meeting right. at yeah. the um, Bath, New York uh, VA Medical Center where we meet with our peers in the VA, mm -hmm. discuss different issues. And um, there's, I believe, 53 religious symbols now that are uh, accepted. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, if anybody goes by Bath, New York, mm -hmm. the, the, Bath VA, or the Bath VA National Veterans Cemetery mm -hmm. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. they, they, yeah. they do an amazing job, and it, it, it's awe-inspiring to visit. And I would also add that um, Last year, it was announced up in Pembroke. They call it Pembroke mm -hmm. in Oakfield, up yeah, east of, east of Buffalo. Near, near the National Cemetery has been <coughs> authorized I heard now, that. Okay. and uh, they we actually met last week. We met with the uh, the the new director of that national of that cemetery, and they're negotiating contracts. And, and he didn't give us a date for the first burial, but mm -hmm. um, I you know. Th that's working, that's in, in, in the works to be another national cemetery in Western New York. Well, I have a follow-up question to that one. My mind races like this all the time <laughs> when I'm on the air here. Uh, let's say somebody is, has passed on, they're a veteran, mm -hmm. and let's just say they're, they're, they're buried in Cemetery B in one of our local communities. Mm -hmm. But now the, the wishes of the, of the family are to put, place that person's mm -hmm. remains in a national veteran's cemetery. Mm -hmm. Can they be transferred? Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure they can, Mike. Don't you think? Probably at somebody's not, expense, I, but I believe so. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I know when, like, if they're in a local cemetery now, and then a national cemetery has been created mm -hmm. at a subsequent date, that um, the, the, it, you can work it out now. Expense-wise, I'm not sure about right, that. Right. Okay. But, but, but I, I know they have a right to be buried in that national cemetery. Right. Okay. So. And the expense is to be determined by someone right. else. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow, we're covering a lot of stuff here. <laughs> well, f whoever asked that question about the, the funerals uh, mm -hmm. and so forth, I hope that answered your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are we going to talk about next? VA net worth? I had a note on that. Oh, uh, VA health care. Uh, yeah. Eligibility for VA health care. Um, originally, you just had to have an honorable discharge. Then Congress, in its infinite wisdom in 2003, decided to put income limits on VA health care and asset limits or net worth. You can only have so much net worth. 
And now the American Legion and the VFW were able to put pressure on, on Congress and they removed the asset limit. So how much you've worked hard to save and put away in stocks or, or savings, no matter, no matter counts. So um, now uh, you just have to have me either meet the income limits or have certain categories. If you have a service disability or anybody who served country in, or served in country in Vietnam mm -hmm. is eligible for VA health care. Mm -hmm. As a side note, we do urge people to contract uh, Tom Reed and Chuck Schumer and tell the VA now that you've gotten rid of the, the asset limits, go the next step and get rid of the income limits because you didn't have them in the first place. And nobody told us if we worked too hard and made a couple of bucks, we wouldn't be eligible for health Right, it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so this is for health benefits? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I know it always has to do with how many family members and, and so forth, but mm. like, what's a typical income that would be too much money? What's like a cap? A married veteran with a spouse, is, it depends on the county, yeah. but right now I just remember this number because we use it all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, $38,875, I believe. If your income is over that, then you're over the income limit for VA healthcare. However, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, there's always these little, yeah. little special yeah. things. Right. Yep. Uh, you can use unreimbursed uh, medical expenses to lower your income, mm -hmm. or if a veteran has a service-related disability, or like we said, any veteran who was in country in Vietnam mm -hmm. um, can come in. So sometimes you might have a vet who's got, a, say, a bum ankle. He was in the Air Force. He was running the obstacle course, and his ankle's never been right since he heard it. But he never filed the claim because there's some, like we always say, there's somebody worse than me. Well, come in, file the claim. We win the claim, we get into health care. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even if you had a good job, made, made too much money, well, now that you have a service-connected disability rating, they have to take you into health care. Yeah. So it seems to me if, if folks are watching, and I think we said this last time the time before, if you're watching, you have a question, mm -hmm. if you have a concern, you say, well, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm eligible, call, right? 661-8255. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Check it out. Don't, mm -hmm. don't wait five years mm -hmm. from now and these guys are gone, my show's mm -hmm. gone, and there's mm -hmm. nobody to talk to right. or whatever. Right. Right. Get, get into the system now, okay? Right. The questions keep popping up here. Now, this was an interesting one. Mm -hmm. If someone registers, registers for services but doesn't use them, mm -hmm. What happens to their allocation of money? Uh, there is no allocation of money, no, is there? No. It's just you get that. There's no allocation. It. It's like a river just keeps on flowing. But, I guess. but like in health, we we'll just take healthcare for example. It's inactive. You'll go inactive if you don't. If you're enrolled in VA healthcare but you don't use it, then you'll go inactive, and then you'll have to at a, some future date all of a sudden. And, and this happens uh, to several veterans, older veterans. They'll come out, the, they'll uh, enroll in VA health care, but not use it for five or 10 years. And then all of a sudden they turn 65 and enroll in Medicare and say, you know what, I really like to be in VA health care too. So they come see us and they go to enroll and, and it's a whole new process. The problem with waiting is the rules change, okay? So that vet was fine before 2003 because of income eligibility, and now he comes in and says, why can't I get it? I was in, I was in it before, why can't I be in it now? Well, mm -hmm. the rules change with the VA. So don't wait, you know, enroll. <laughs> and of the 11,000 veterans that are, that are in this county, mm -hmm. how many of them use your services, do you think? Um, I would say. I know that's a tough question, but I mean, that's, I was yes, in 2000. 20% maybe? Yeah, I was going to say 3,000 maybe. Yeah. To so there's a lot of people that, that hopefully, if they're watching yeah. or they hear, or mm -hmm. family members, they'll, mm -hmm. you know, because like, like we we're saying, you may not want to use it right this minute, but five, ten years from now, you may need it. Mm -hmm. And you might be in a hard place where you really could use the veteran services and, mm -hmm. and your company has gone under, you don't have supplemental insurance, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, just to, like to distinguish between uh, like us and us in the, in the VA, one of the, our cost of battles is to let people know that we're not the Department of Veterans right. Affairs. We're your advocate, so we work for you against the VA. Mm -hmm. But in terms of allocated for, for money, like our budget, if somebody comes into our office and they're not eligible or they don't use any of the programs that, that we have to offer, our budget's going to be the same. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the Department of Veterans Affairs, if you enroll in veterans health care and, and you don't use it, the, the way that Congress allocates the money to the VA hospitals is by the number of veterans, a certain amount of dollars for every veteran they identify in that hospital's territory. Per capita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, Gary, and I all enroll in VA health care, and you guys are relatively healthy, but I'm sick. And the VA spends $100 on you and $200 on Gary last year. Well, the rest of the money goes in the pool to help all the other veterans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to the next. What else you got, Gary? Uh, I think we continue, we, we were talking earlier about uh, um, 
School tax exemption. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that that's been a um, pretty heated discussion. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that it has. Some of the minutes um, in the papers. Right. Um, when we go back to 2013, um, the veterans, veterans always, um, uh, under New York State 538 law, they could get the county and township exemption, but the school tax was never included. So the governor in late 2013 um, allowed school districts, but it would be up to the school districts t to pass that, to, uh, to say, okay, w w you can allow the veterans uh, school tax exemption. Um, that, uh, that decision came out late in, in uh, December of 13, so to implement that by the exemption deadline, which is March 1st of every year, was tough that mm -hmm. first year. But the next year, from 2014 on, um, we worked really hard uh, with the school districts, you know. Uh, they had to hold public forums um, and uh, letters back and forth. Um, but it was a tough budget time for a lot of our school districts. Um, at that time, only Southwestern passed it. Uh, they passed it like right out uh, that first year. Brockton, the following year. But we have other 16 other school districts um, that either deferred it, um, voted no um, um, uh, in the public forums and school district uh, meetings that I went to. Um, all the words were there about valuing, you know, the veterans and their sacrifice and what they went through in serving our country, defending our freedom. We heard all the words, but when it came down to voting for it, um, mm -hmm. it didn't. It didn't happen. So I'd ask, so here we are, now we're facing the 16-17 budget um, starting next fall. I'd ask the school districts to once again consider this. Um, and, uh, and when you look at it, um, yeah, the legislation did, uh, was somewhat, uh, you know, it, it's hard to describe. There's the legislation that came out said, okay, we're going to, we're not, we're, we're not going to reimburse the schools if they give the exemption. The, uh, the, the, the school budget is the same regardless, mm -hmm. okay? So what that means is if you're gonna exempt the veterans, you to shift the then you shift the tax, tax to the burden, the you know, use the burden to the non-veteran, right? right? And that, that was the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and that's still the same right now. And it's still the same. There's, the legislation didn't change. Um, but as we've surveyed many of the school districts, and we, we've come, to find out that ten to twenty cents per thousand per thousand was the was the what what would be um, for the non-veteran that would be the expense on the non-veteran. So on a hundred thousand dollar house, we're talking between between ten and twenty dollar increase in their taxes. Um, now that wasn't every school district, but that was a general that that, right. that was a general rule. So um, so. Uh, I think it's time once again. You know, we, we let's honor our veterans. You know, okay. let let's uh, let's work hard to see if we can make this happen in our school districts. All right. So we'll put it out there for people mm -hmm. to consider it. And as I think we were talking before, the show started. Every school district is in their own financial microcosm, and mm -hmm. some are m more in a position to, to, to look at that and others not so much. Right. I think also there's a groundswell whether, whether the community feels strongly about mm -hmm. doing that. I've talked to veterans that say, I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about that mm -hmm. exemption. I don't need it. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I've well, heard my, that. My response would be, that's wonderful. You don't have to apply for it, yeah. <laughs> but your brother, or your sister, and I was going to apply for yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so don't mm -hmm. don't deny others of that. Exactly. And while we're on benefits and exemptions and things, the question came up: Boy, the, those wires hot today. Uh, <laughs> what about college? How do you, are there still services for uh, after? I mean, that's what the recruiter mm -hmm. tells you: mm -hmm. get, get a, go see the world and get your college education, right? Well, if you mm -hmm. signed up for the the, the GI Bill uh, and uh, there was part of your contract. You have a certain amount of years. Um, the old Chapter 35 mm -hmm. was 10 years, 10 years, and now the guys and gals are getting 15. 15. Mm -hmm. 15. There's also what's called voc rehab or vocational rehab. Okay. Now that's if a veteran has a service-related disability and they're out of work, they can use voc rehab to train for a whole wide range of programs. You can, I had one of my Army buddies use it to get his barber's license. And I've had guys use the Obviously, gun. you go visit him for a beer. <laughs> yeah. That's a Mike's, the, Mike's the only guy that has a, big, a longer beard than I do when it comes out of all my guys. <laughs> well, he lives in South Carolina, so that's why I don't get there very often. 
<laughs> um, but um, yeah. you, uh, you know, um, you can use it to be a truck driver, you can use it for traditional, you want to be a math teacher. So where do you um, get this training? Well, what happens is uh, the veteran has a service related disability and they're, and they're out of work or their disability prevents them from their job mm -hmm. that they were doing. They come to see us, we help them fill out the program, they decide what are the, the application, they decide what they want to do and they meet with a counselor at the Buffalo V Regional Office and okay. as long as that um, chosen career path um, is realistic and it's going to be um, go towards gainful employment, mm -hmm. um, like if you want to study medieval psychology, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you want to get your truck driver's license, or you want to be a math teacher. Let's say electrician. You electrician. want to be an electrician. Exactly. exactly. So you meet with a counselor, then they'll either put you in touch with the programs or help you find a program. So mm -hmm. off the top of your head, where are some of those programs here in Chautauqua County? Because people um, say, I can't drive, I don't got any money. BOCES and uh, yeah. here's... Uh, the Hughes Educational Center? Hughes Education mm -hmm. They have a whole bunch of them. The Guidas Education Center? Yep. Those? And, um, so they would be right in school with the kids, mm -hmm. the young kids during the day? No, there might be like older programs, like the truck driving schools after. No, that's after school, but and electrical programs. Electrical the programs, yeah. So there'd be um, adults with, with the high school students. I've seen potentially, that. Potentially, yeah. Right. So I'm assuming right. they were yep. veterans, I don't know. Right. Exactly, JCC has programs. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually, uh, a couple of years ago, I had a vet who went to uh, become a diesel mechanic, mm -hmm. and so it's got a great job in Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And besides the, the Voc Rehab Program, though, both SUNY, SUNY Fredonia and JCC have veterans offices there to help with education benefits so for, for the full-time or part-time students. Okay. And the benefits are rich. I mean, they are, I mean, when I look back 20, 30 years ago, mm -hmm. um, the, the, what, I mean, our vets now get it. Yeah, I mean, not just the tuition and books and, and depending on the costs and, and everything. They may not pay everything, like but they even pay housing now. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, you. They really need to take advantage. Okay. of Those are eligible for the post 9/11 GI Bill, like Gary said. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, it, what, what what they get now, and and their the GI Bill is now opened up to more things too because it used to be limited. It used to be mm -hmm. limited, but now there's there's a lot less uh, restrictions on what you can use the GI Bill for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just in my earpiece I got the clarification mm -hmm. on the question. So in order to start the process, do they start with you guys or do they st go to the college? If it's vocational rehab, us. Us. If yeah. it's the college, you would uh, start probably with your registrar's office mm -hmm. and and for mm -hmm. the for your GI Bill. Okay. So I hope that clears it. Uh, and know. they can, but they can start with us, and we'll, you know, if sure. they don't know where to go to the college, we'll make that connection right. for them. Yeah, to they it. So come to us anyways because you might yeah. need to enroll in healthcare. Healthcare, right? yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll do the one stop. Yeah. Well, it, it, let's talk about one stop. So, okay. okay, I just moved to Chicago County. I'm making this up. Mm -hmm. I'm a veteran of something, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to see what my services are. So, do you go through all the questions? We sure do. Bing, 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 housing, right. uh, health. We, yeah, you come in and you're in there for one thing but but Mike and I and Lori before and and now you know all of us we screen you for all for everything yeah, local you state don't get you, yeah you don't get out of our office so you build, without so you're building a profile right, of need exactly. and, and strengths and weakness. Right, right. guys we're down to like one minute oh my gosh so here we go again <laughs> we've covered a lot of ter territory right, but we yeah. still haven't covered everything yeah. Gary 30 seconds and Mike 30 seconds what do you want people okay. to know in the phone number um, 661-8255 that's right. our phone number in Dunkirk uh, uh, we're short a uh, service officer, but we've hired a new one. Two six eight six zero three zero is okay. the number in Dunkirk. Um, uh, I would like everyone this coming weekend to uh, participate in a Memorial Day activity. Um, we have several throughout the county. Almost all your townships, Every town either a, pra a parade, uh, a visit a cemetery. Um, um, uh, remember a loved one who sacrificed mm -hmm. uh, for your freedoms. Um, and uh, and thank you for being part of this community is what I would. He say. left you 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, come see, come see us. We're we're here for you. We're we're, we're your brothers and sisters, and we uh, we we took this job because we wanted help. We stayed at this job because we know um, that we're needed, and you know we're here for you. Okay, and you're in Jamestown, and the, your address is. Um, 610 West 3rd, Jamestown, New York, uh, right across from Fire Fresh Grocery Store. Okay, and the Mayville office is the Mayville office. No, I'm, no. I'm with Mike. Mike You're and I are in Jamestown, but we're also in Dunkirk, too. So okay, folks. We're all together. All right, guys, as always, we're going to bring you back in November before Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for, uh, we're going to talk more about Memorial Day next weekend. 
I'm Doc Campbell. You've been watching Chautauqua Sunrise. My guest has been uh, Mike Rao, service officer, and the director, Gary Chilcott from the Veterans Service Agency. I hope this helped. Call those numbers. Uh, get out there and find out what's due you. You deserve it. Uh, we'll see you all again next week. What a very special 100th episode of Chautauqua Sunrise. Hey. Stay dry, stay warm, and stay and take care. We'll see you then. Bye now. Mm. Thanks, right. guys. Right. <laughs> Bye.